Yo, it is Hot 975 Las Vegas. We're sitting with a two-time WWE Hall of Famer, King Booker. Oh, you brought him as a wrestling nerd. Can I see those, please? Camera, I'm, I'm gonna need you to get closer to look at these rings real quick. Those are official. That means hard work, but two-time Hall of Famer, King Booker, Booker T. Booker, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. We're here. Pacquiao Thurman fight night is tomorrow. What brings you out to the fight? Hey, man. ESPN. You be doing boxing? Yeah, ESPN 97.5. Um, I talk boxing on a weekly basis. Um, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, MMA, you know, professional wrestling, you know, bare knuckle, anything combat I'm off into. I love the um, the sport of uh, pugilists. It's just something I've been a, uh, a fan of for, for many, many years. Fantastic. Now, talking about this fight with Pacquiao Thurman, uh, I need your prediction. Hey, man, it's going to be a good fight. Manny Pacquiao is a legend of the sport. Um, you know, um, he's, he's eight-time division champion, you know, but he's going against an undefeated fighter, uh, undefeated champion, a guy who um, he doesn't know how to lose um, that cloak of invincibility he's going to bring in the ring with him. You know, he's 10 years um, younger than Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao has never fought anyone, I, I, I think, with the foot speed um, and the agility of a, a person like Keith Thurman. I think that's going to give him a whole lot of trouble at 40 years old. I think Manny Pacquiao is going to come with a plan A, plan B, uh, uh, and he's going to start looking for a plan C, and that could be his mistake. But I do pick Keith Thurman, uh, uh, unanimous decision, or a late 9, 10-round knockout. Now, speaking of experience with Pacquiao and being 40, year, uh, 40 years old, you later on into your career was always top notch. Where does that hunger, where does that drive come in when you believe, when you look at a guy like Pacquiao, I've done it all, what is there left to do? Where you know, do you get that hunger? Uh, you know what I think Manny Pacquiao is dealing with right now is Manny Pacquiao has gone through his, his whole career and he's been better than everyone. Everyone that he's fought, just about. He's, he's lost yeah. a few fights here and there, but Manny's normally he's been better than everyone. Uh, you get to a certain point, and you go, man, I'm st I can still do this. I'm still I'm still better than all these guys. Yeah. And then you go out there and you fight that one guy, and you go, wow, man, these guys are getting good. And, and the thing is, it's not that he can't go out and still uh, perform, but 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 pulling the trigger like he could. 10 years ago, it's going to be a little bit different. Pulling the trigger like he could 15 years ago, it's going to be a, lot, a little bit even more different. So I think Manny Pacquiao, somewhere in, in the fight, he's going to start questioning himself. Is this the game um, still for me, or is it a young man's game? Facts. Now, do you have time to speak about a little wrestling? AEW, WWE, is the business the best it's been in terms of competition in a long time? Oh uh, yeah, as far as competition goes, but I, I said you know a year ago that the business is that it's you know even is all time high, even you know um, surpassing the Monday Night Wars because the independent scene now is bigger than it's ever been. Um, it's, it's so many shows going on per week all around the country, all around the world that um, you can you can actually make a living outside of WWE, AEW, New Japan, or any of those companies. Just off if, of Twitter, to be if, honest, if you're good enough. You know, so um, the wrestling uh, business right now is on fire. When you when you talk about the WWE in the locker room, going back 10 or 15 years to compare to it now, how, I feel like it's better in terms of the athletic ability and the athletes. Is is the competition within within the company better than well, it was back then, or is it a different environment? Do you feel like they're playing too many video games? Because I hear that all <laughs> the time. They're not focused on it. It's a totally different world now. Um, as far as the game go and you know everything changes, you know, but uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, him and I we're gonna be doing this podcast on on Monday. Ooh, um, um, are you he's joining you or are you joining well, this? I'm gonna be joining him um, on this podcast. Uh, we're gonna be um, doing a reunion um, down in uh, Tampa, Tampa, Florida. And um, but but when I was coming up, Steve and I we weren't friends or anything like that. Chris Jericho and I we weren't friends. You know, uh, me and Eddie, you know what I mean, we butted heads uh, because we all wanted to be the best. We all wanted to be the guy that was at the top of the card. Um, it wasn't about, you know, um, going out and breaking bread or anything like that for me. It was about, you know, get, becoming a Hall of Famer and my name ringing with the great names of professional wrestling at the end of the day. That's what I thought about. It was always a job, you know, uh, for me. It, it was never, you know, me going playing a game or anything like that. Uh, so I think that's what is missing from the, the, the game, the, the sport today is 
guys really um, going out there and believing in, you know, the sport and believing in um, professional wrestling as a whole and what it could do for you at the end of the day. Do you think the competition is going to help with that, though? Now that oh. they, now that before, it's like whether you like it or not, you're well, the only thing you can watch. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's going to help a whole lot because the talent now know that they got to go out and perform at the highest level. They're going to want to go out and show the other guys on the other side, hey, man, we got the best roster over here. And those guys are going to want to show that as well. So hopefully um, the competition uh, uh, drive the business to a place that it's never been before. And, that, and that's good for the, the wrestler. That's, that's good for the fans. Um, that's good for everybody. Who's been the most surprising superstar, in your opinion, over the past 10 years? Like, to me, someone like The Miz, who a lot of people critiqued him, Rumors, you know, obviously I'm just a fan and you hear on the internet that people didn't like him backstage. Is there someone to be like, damn, you're still here and not only that, you're excelling? Um, you know, for me, I mean, watching The Miz do his thing, you know, I always knew The Miz was, he was going to excel, even though he was a guy that was dressing out in the hallway at one point. <laughs> you know, he could even And that dress, was true. Yeah, that and was he true. was really. Yeah, he could dress in the locker room or anything like that at one point. He was bad. I know it's true because you're smiling. You're <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was no, but, 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 but he's a guy that. You know, um, I wouldn't call it hazing or anything like that. But young guys, they had to, you know, earn their keep, you know, back in the days. These days I hear a lot of the young wrestlers disrespecting, you know, a lot of the older wrestlers that came along. Can you imagine some some young golfer disrespecting Arnold Palmer or That's Jack true. Nicholas? Can you, can, you, can you imagine, you know, some rest, some some young tennis player, you know, talking about Macaro or Federer? Can you, that can, you, can you imagine that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think the the, the, the wrestling business has changed um, as far as the respect to the guys that came before, that laid the foundation, that really know what this thing is about. Lean on those guys a little bit. Maybe you might get somewhere. Two, two last things. Number one, where did Shucky Duck Quack Quack come from? It was an old comedian back in the day. Uh, he, he, he didn't make it like Eddie Murphy. And um, since he didn't make it, I just thought I'd steal all of his stuff. Well, it's not the comedians. <laughs> it's actually, it's Booker T's now. And last thing, I just want you to know something. A 10-year-old heavyweight, when I was 10 years old, WrestleMania 19, when you lost to Triple H. Yeah, yeah. Did this is the cry? closest Did moment. No, I almost <laughs> cried and I almost broke my TV. And my mom almost beat my ass. But oh, I wanted you man. to know, I thought you was going to win the championship. Speaking on that last thing, when Kofi won at WrestleMania, how was that? Where were you? What did you feel? Oh, I was there. I watched Kofi win it, and I was like, you know, good for Kofi. You know, big ups, you know what I mean? Yeah, glass selling's finally been cr cr crashed through. You know what I mean? Um, I, was, I was happy for him. I made sure I gave him props and put him on a pedestal, you know, that whole weekend. Even though, you know, my brother and I went in the Hall of Fame, it was about Kofi Mania. So, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, it, he, he's, got the, he's got the ball now. And now, you know, that 10-year-old that kid that was watching him don't have to feel the same way you felt and you know, wanted to break the TV, uh, yeah. you know, back in the day, you know. There it is, man. Booker T, yo, Mark Henry, he's top five. Top five. Oh, yeah. He's in the top five of the list. How you ain't going to have him <laughs> at five? That's the five-time WWE, WCW world champion, Booker T. Appreciate you. Already, man. Thank you, brother. You got it.